Good morning. I know it's early. Oh, good cup of joe. Look at that steam. Yeah. That's when the coffee's good. That's when it's at its best. Good morning. What's up, Miss Marilyn? How are you? What's up, Miss Mary Birds? My sugar plum. Good morning, darling. How are you? I know it's early, but uh Hey Tina, good morning, sweetheart. It's early, but as you can tell in my title, I, uh, I have treatment today, so my sister will be here about 10. I'm actually all ready to rock and roll. I just got to uh, throw in my shoes and be ready to go. That's what I'm doing, Mary. I'm, I'm on my second cup already. I was actually uh, in my buddy's live for the last like hour. My, the bug man, real cool dude, just hanging out in there, actually talking about a lot of different stuff. <laughs> He had a big panel, a bunch of people up on the panel. He has regulars that are in there every day. He's live at 5 a.m. So I told Gigability Billy that I would stop in there today. I didn't see him. So he probably maybe got home from shrimping and fell asleep. I'm not sure. Or he was there early. I don't know. I was up at like 7. because I slept. I was in bed. All meds in me. In bed. 6.30 last night. <laughs> How am I feeling today? I'm okay. I have, I have a really wicked headache. Other than that, I'm okay. This is my, my I got a headache. My neck. I don't know. It's the way I, the way I slept, maybe. I don't know. My neck hurts. Like, it's giving me a headache, like, up the back of my neck. It's kind of weird, but it'll be all right. I just took a couple of, uh, I took all my meds, so everything should be making me feel a little bit better. I'm hoping so. Yeah. I already have, um, I already have my, uh, my, Tumor meds, my cancer meds, they're already here. Look, Mary, I put them in there last night, so I didn't forget. In my, I have them in my, uh, my man bag, my man purse, whatever you want to call it, my purse, because I have to take them at eleven, and I know at that at eleven o'clock, I know at that time I'll just be getting there, so I'm just going to wind up taking them. Um, I'll probably either take them right before I leave here. If I remember, or I'll take them when I get there. Either one. It doesn't matter. I'm allowed to. They can't stop me from taking my medicine. But, uh, yeah, I did everything last night. Uh, actually, I never did. The soup was way too hot. I couldn't pack it up. Plus, I don't have containers. So it's sitting on a stove, but it's cold. Um, I have one here. I just I started drinking. Tina, I might take one with me. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. I only have, like, two left. So. But um, yeah, I'll be all right. Appreciate it. Um, heck was I gonna say? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know what I was gonna say. Actually, I fell. I, I I was in bed so early. That's what I was talking about. I was in bed so early, and I couldn't fall asleep. I actually, wound up having a bowl of the pea soup last night. Mary, it was delicious. Very very good. It was very very good. Um, thinking it's probably the best. And I mean this, and I'm a chef. I've made it professional level at work. It's probably the best pot of pea soup I've ever made. It's just the flavor is in, insane. It's it's not as it's thickened up a little bit as as it cooled down, but it's not as thick as I really wanted it to be. But that's okay. It, eating it, it wasn't uh, here or there. It didn't matter the thickness really. The flavor is there. Just uh, absolutely insane. The, the the ham, just you get a chunk of it in your mouth, just it just broke up, you know, naturally in your mouth. Just delicious, really, really. I want to stop bragging, but <laughs> it was really, really good. Uh, yeah. Well, I cooked for that one. I cooked about three hours. The potato soup was only about an hour, an hour and a half, but the pea soup, nice and low, about about three hours. I think it took just about that. It'll be even better today or tomorrow. Like, even the potato soup is going to be better today. I'll probably have that one. Well, no, I'm going to my mom's house. But, uh, yeah, we're not going to have an afternoon live today, guys, just so you know. Um, getting out of treatment. By the time I get out of there, my it starts at 11. I probably won't be out of there until around 3, 
<coughs> and then I'm going to my mom's house. I think my mom is going to go with my sister up to her house for the weekend, I think, to go hang out with the grandbabies. I think, well, grandbabies are all older, but I think she's going up there. So we're going to stop there. I can spend a little time with them, give them all the good news from the um, from the results and everything. And then I want to be home by, I told my dad, regardless if my sister leaves and my mom or not, and take me home. My dad said he'll take me if I want to leave. I want to be home by no later than like 6.30, 7, 6.30 maybe, because uh, I want to watch the Hall of Fame induction tonight. So let me look it up on my phone. And then it's WrestleMania weekend, so if I feel like crap for my treatment, which I usually do, it's not a bad place to be all weekend in bed watching WrestleMania. Uh, let me see here. How's everybody doing today? I know I'm rambling, but I've been up for a while. I had a lot of coffee in me already. Can't spell. Jeez Louise. Hey, what it's good, it's good. Yeah, it's true. Like I said, uh, you know, I'm a good, I'm a good chef. So, <clears throat> oh wow, what? WWE Hall of Fame ceremony, Friday, April fifth, Wells Fargo Center, Philadelphia. Start time approximately 10 p.m. Wow, that's crazy. See, I told you they're doing a. Um, I wasn't sure if they were going to do a SmackDown tonight, but they are. So they're doing a SmackDown from eight to 10, and then they're going to do the Hall of Fame ceremony after at 10 p.m. Wow, that's late. I'm surprised they're going to do that. That's crazy. The Hall of Fame ceremony will be live streamed on Peacock, not shown on Fox like SmackDown. So you'll need to switch over at 10. Yeah, that's what I figured. I have to set up my uh, fire deck. It's raining again? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it looks cloudy outside. I don't know. I haven't been outside yet. But I know my friend, uh, she messaged me every morning, and she said that it was uh, it was still windy. So I am depending on the temperature. I try to really care what it is. I'm going to bring my sweatshirt anyway. Like I have my uh, – it's actually right behind me. Just my zip-up my zip up hoodie sweatshirt. I'm going to bring it just I don't want to get cold. And depending, sometimes in the certain times on the third floor where I go for my treatment, it's usually chilly in there. So, good morning, Zigzag. But yeah, they offer you if you want to if you want a blanket or whatever. I'm like, nah, I just I just wear my sweatshirt. But they'll give you blankets if you ask. It's usually pretty chilly in there. I don't know why it is, but I've got a headache too. I think that is pressure change because of the storms. Plus, mine's allergies. Yeah, I don't have allergies, but mine could be a. Uh, the pressure changes stuff too. I don't know. I think it's just to be honestly the way I slept because it's kind of like in my neck. I tried like usually I can crack my neck every morning, but it's like so stiff and um, it's like just shooting up the back of my neck into my head. So it's probably from my neck hurting. But we'll be all right. There's my friend Terry. Hopefully Terry can stop in. I don't know if she's at work already or not, but I wanted to say thank you. She left me a, a little donation in um, GoFundMe last night. Appreciate you, Tina. Uh, Terry, if you see this. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I do appreciate you more than you know. <clears throat> so I had it. I put it up on my community post, and she was the only one that donated. I'm just trying to get some help because I'm in, I'm in serious trouble coming the first of the month, deal. So unless a still disability kicks in sometime this month, I'm sure hoping so. Oh man, that coffee's good. Not in the mood to go today, I'll be honest with you. I look forward to going to treatments most of the time, but not today. I don't know why. I'm just not in the mood. Like I'm gonna I'm happy to be able to see my oncologist and he's gonna tell me the news of the you know, all the results. <clears throat> so that's gonna be good. Um, that's gonna be the only exciting part. I just I'm I was just there Friday last week getting poked and prodded and missing Things and for IVs, and now I got to get it all done all over again. I, that's just the worst part for me. I, I really hate, I really hate getting needles and IVs put in. It sucks. I hate it with a passion. If you can't tell by now, <laughs> I do not enjoy it whatsoever. I don't think anybody does. 
my uh, son sent me videos from the Morgan Wallen concert. The one song had me in tears. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like his music. It's pretty cool. I checked it a few times. Good morning, G. Good morning, Terry. Thank you so much, honey. I just was talking about it. I said thank you for um, your GoFundMe donation. I appreciate it very much, sweetie. You're the bestest of the bestest. I hope you're having a good day. Yeah, I'm just early because I got to go to treatment at 11. My sister will be here like 10. And then we're going to head out. She might come in for a cup of coffee. I don't know yet. I'm going to text her and see if she wants me to put, a, put another pot of coffee on. If she does, I will. We'll have a quick cup and then we'll head out. It's only like 15 minutes away. <clears throat> but sometimes when I, if I get there early, sometimes they'll get me in earlier. But the whole process, I won't even have my medicine going into me IV until my appointment's at 11, mind you. Probably... 12 30 1 o'clock they might have me hooked up in the uh in the room maybe maybe and it's only a 30 minute trip it's just all the time i go in i go to uh the lab they do my vitals they take three tubes of blood they send it to the to the lab i guess um then i'll do my blood pressure take my weight and then they say, okay, you can go upstairs. And then we go upstairs on the elevator, and I go wait to talk to my oncologist. I sit down with him for however long. Sometimes it's like 15 minutes. Sometimes it's a half hour. Uh, but he does not order my Keytruda until we're done talking. That's just the process. It's been like that from day one, and it's like that for everyone. So by the time I get done with that, um, his his on the paper says eleven twenty. I see him. So by the time I get done with the lab and I go up there, it's about eleven thirty. By the time I get done with him, now it's almost twelve. He orders the meds. So by the time that gets downstairs, gets ordered, gets filled, and gets sent up, it's usually about an hour later. It's crazy, man. Like they know you're coming for treatment. They should have that shit ready. That's in my opinion, and that's the hardest part for me, because you're just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, it sucks, but. You're welcome, sweetie. I'm going to put some in your PayPal account. That's why I didn't give a lot. Oh, okay, Terry. That's thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, I love you. I do. I really do. Thank you so much. <sighs> I'm putting together a terrarium for a Venus flytrap. Oh, cool. My mom had those when we were younger too. Showed us kids how, uh, I think she fed them like, I don't know what, I think it gave them uh, crickets, I think they ate, if I remember correctly. Crickets or ants or something, I, it was something like that, I don't remember. We were young. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's why I'm up early, uh, so. I was just in uh, my buddy, new, new channel I found uh, out from Billy, he introduced me to them, Bugman. Cool, cool spot, man, they're all into fishing, and this is, we're talking about a lot of different things, talking about the eclipse, and talking about we we're actually talking about cancer and meds and just a lot, a lot of great conversation. I was in there for about an hour or so. And then I told him, like, Buggy, I got to go. I want to go do my live and talk to my peoples for a little while. I want to come at least see you guys for a half hour or so, 45 minutes. Uh, because I won't be live this afternoon. Are you getting the Red Devil, I think it's called? What is that? What's the Red Devil? I don't know what that is, exactly. All right, Terry. The Red Devil. What is that? Is that the eclipse you're talking about? Uh, if you are, I think they said it's going to be. Uh, I know they said in Chicago around two thirty. I think they were just talking. Wait, I just left there. They were just. I told you know how my friggin. Oh, it's a cancer treatment. Uh, no, I don't know. I've never heard of Red Devil. No, I get um, immunotherapy. So I don't get um, exact chemotherapy because chemo does not work on the cancer I have. So I have to get a immunotherapy, and it's called Keytruda is the name of it. They have commercials on TV about it. Um, a lot of uh, very big success rate um, of going into remission from doing this immunotherapy. So my doc wanted to give it a shot since it was the only thing we could have done. I think there were other immunotherapies I could have tried, but he said that this one all the trials they um they they had and people going on it the success rate was very high so so we're, we're trying that plus the pills that i just showed you the 
when Vima I take is a uh, trial drug also. And uh, in combination with the with the treatment, it's uh, been a very good high percentage number of people going into remission. So it's we we gave it a shot. And so far, like I said, you know, we're we're getting good results. So still a long ways away from getting out of the woods, but it's a good start anyway. My buddy David Clark put it best. He said, "You're not out of the woods, but the woods got a trim." And it made me giggle. It was pretty funny, but. He, uh, I know what he meant. <sighs> oh, man. My neighbor had that. What, uh, immunotherapy? Like I said, it's just, it's just something new that they started a few years back. And, um, like I said, you know, he, he, my oncologist told me about it. He said, you know, for whatever reason, uh, with the kidney cancer I do have, particular cancer I have, it does not respond to chemo. It will respond to radiation if we have to down the line, but he said we probably won't have to. Um, so the good thing about that is I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not going to lose my hair. I'm not going to, you know, be vomiting like crazy like a lot of people do on chemo to get super chemo sick. Uh, my one buddy I told you in North Carolina, he does chemo. And he does both, actually. He has esophageal cancer, so he does both. Uh, they, they go back and forth. But when he's on the chemo, he has a, a port put in, and they run, like, 48-hour chemo. And then he's sick for, like, a week. It sucks, man. I feel bad for him. But like I said, you know, once once he feels better after that week, then he feels great <sighs> until he goes to the next one, you know. So that's that's good. For me, the, the, the immunotherapy, I'll get it today, and I'll probably feel like crap for the next, like, three, four days. Most That's usually the way it goes. I'm curious to see how this one, I'm going to respond to this one because I didn't have one three weeks ago because we were doing all the testing. So I'm curious if this one's going to mess me up bad and make me want to throw up and stuff like I did in the beginning. Like in the beginning, I was vomiting. I couldn't hold any food down. And uh, he said that was probably from my body being introduced to all these um, new meds and stuff. So um, um what was I going to say? So, uh, yeah, I was saying, just curious to see how I'm going to respond to this one today. And worst case scenario, I feel like crap, but it beats me up. Then, like I said, I have WrestleMania all weekend, so I'll just lay in bed. No worries there. I already made both soups, so that's done. So I don't have to do that. So I have my weekend is free. Just have to eat and rest. That's it. I don't even have to shower this morning. I took a shower last night. Smart boy. I said, you know what? Do it tonight. I shaved. I showered. I did everything I had to do. Ah, look who's up early. What's up, Miss Shack? Good morning, sweetheart. How are you? I keep saying early. It's 930 now, but I have been up since 7. Uh, thanks, Exact. Appreciate that. I hope so, too. Unfortunately, I know, you know, I've been through this now for the last five, six months, so I know how it's going to be. But I know I'm going to be feeling like shit, but the approach is different now, five months, six, six months later, than it was in the beginning, you know. So, yeah. Tired, but okay. Hope you're feeling good. I'm okay. All right, Ms. Shaq, thanks for asking. I, uh, I was up super early because I got to go for, um, I got to go for my cancer treatment today. My sister's taking me, so she's probably left her house right already. Yeah, she I guarantee she left her house already. She's about an hour away. Um, she's an hour away north from me, so she'll she'll be here about ten o'clock, and then um, probably have a cup of coffee and then head out. Thanks, Terry. If you're here, thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate you. I just got it. Thank you so much, and thank you for the kind words too. <clears throat> yeah, I hope it does too. I tried the past couple of days and it hasn't gone through either, Terry. So I don't know what's going on with that, man. The whole state is messed up. It's crazy. But thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. <clears throat> and Rocco too. Rocco sent me a dollar fifty a while back. It's still sitting there. I told him I'm not touching it. That buck fifty staying in my PayPal. That's my emergency. My emergency dollar fifty. <clears throat> <coughs> I 
tell you what, I'm super nauseous today. I don't know why right now. I don't know if it's the coffee or it's that friggin' shake. I don't know, because that's that vanilla one. But this one doesn't taste weird, and it's not as dark as as the other one that I said tasted weird. I don't know. It's just my stomach is bothering me. I hate it, especially on days like today when I got to go for treatment and I got to be hooked up for half an hour. I don't want to. I had if I have to go to the bathroom, I have to drag the whole friggin' thing with me. It's just a pain in the butt. But I'm I'm fortunate because my uh, my my key true to drip is a half an hour, and then like five or ten minutes after that is just saline. So I mean, literally forty minutes. But I told you everything leading up to it, I'll be there friggin' forever. Anxiety more? Eh, I don't know. I'm not anxious. I'm. Uh, Thanks, Terry. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get like that anymore with this. I'm so used to it now. It's, nah, I'm not anxious or nothing. I'm more anxious than my sister coming, you know, and like, you know, telling everybody the good news and all that stuff. You know what I mean? That I'm a little bit more anxious about, but other than that, I'm fine. I just, I don't know. <clears throat> I had the same thing. I took my meds. I ate my sandwich. I had my shake and coffee. That's it. And, my stomach is just like, <coughs> oh, cool. I'm getting like that, like dry heavy. I'm getting the dry heavies. <coughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't know why it just came, just started too. Like five minutes ago, I started feeling like that. Oh man, I'll be all right though. This too shall pass, my good friends. This you, this too shall pass. Oh man. Yeah. Plus, she's starting me on a new uh, pain med too. I got to pick that up today. I got to pick up my extended. Pain meds also. I got to pick up both of those today. I'm hoping the other one's ready. Um, they both should be ready. That's what I'm going to do as soon as I get there because the lab is right next to the pharmacy. So I can go do that first before I do anything. And then move on from there. Oh, she's going to flip out for sure. I saw you taking meds five minutes ago. You saw me taking meds? No, you didn't. I didn't take any meds since I came on here. I took them before I came on. No, I had uh, I had the well, I had them out. I had the uh, the tumor meds out, Terry. If that's what you're talking about, I didn't I didn't take them because I take them at eleven o'clock. So I can't, I can't take them until um, I get to the hospital. Maybe you're pregnant. <laughs> that's funny, Mary. Are you still gaining weight? Because you look like you are. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Not tremendous amount. I actually, I think I lost weight. I lost like a few pounds in the last couple of weeks, actually. Didn't gain any more. I don't, I don't know more when I get on a scale. But the last time I was there, I was one. At my worst, I was 168. And then I was 192 was the highest I was at. And that was about five weeks ago. What did you pop in your mouth? I don't know. Coffee? I had coffee, my nutrition shake. Did I take anything? No, I don't think I did. Terry, I don't think I did. Because I could have sworn I took everything um, before I came on here. Yeah, I took my blood pressure meds. I took my my two pain meds. And I took my Senna and my Amlenopine. Oh, you're scaring me now. I thought I saw you take something when I first came in. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. No, I had I had this out. Is this what you're talking about when you came in? Did I have it like this? I had I had it like this, and I was showing Tina that I have them with me. But no, I know I definitely didn't take them. I don't know. Maybe I had a uh, maybe a piece of my sandwich or something. That that could be. A, I, know, I know I didn't take the cancer meds. That I know. That I, I'm not taking until I get there. But thank you. No, oh, we're good. I don't know. Maybe it was. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it was, I don't know. Did I take a fiber gummy, maybe? I really don't remember, to be honest with you. Cheers, pancakes coming right up. Coffee's on. It's a great day to be a guy. Word. I'll roll back. Let's go to the videotape. Warner Wolf, highlights of the week. 
You guys remember that? You remember Warner Wolf? Plays of the week. He should be on Friday nights. And then he had uh, plays of the decade. Those were the best, man. <clears throat> he used to say, well, let's go to the videotape. Oh, me. Yeah. yeah. Go back and see. I have no idea. Anthony all day. Good morning, bud. How are you? Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Hope you're doing well. There's the uh, there's the big girl up on the wall, Anthony. I don't know if I mentioned it the other day in the in the, in the live. <clears throat> yeah, everybody, Anthony all day. I met and um, Skip Jack Nancy's. Oh, it's Nancy. Woohoo! Skip Jack Cindy's live. Met a lot of awesome people there. And I noticed a lot of people that go into Skip Jack Cindy is goes into Bugman in the morning. I've noticed. I've seen this morning a lot of people, similar people there. So, yeah, I was in Buggies for about an hour this morning. He's still live now. I told him I was going to leave because I wanted to go live for a little bit before I have to go to cancer treatment. Ooh. Yeah, everybody say hello. That's a nice one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was my big girl. 33 and a half inch steelhead. I caught up in uh, Lake Ontario, right where the Salmon River meets uh, Lake Ontario there. It's called Selkirk State Park. Caught that. I'll be 49 in June. I caught that when I was 16. She's been around a long time, that girl. <laughs> Terry, don't do that. I almost spit my coffee all over my friggin' laptop. She said you were picking a hair out of your mouth mustache. I almost I just had a chug of coffee when I when I looked and read that. I almost spit my coffee all over my monitor, man. That would have sucked. <coughs> oh man. I need to put my volume up on my phone so I could hear when my sister gets here. Make sure. Uh, call volume, ring notifications, everything. Oh. Oh, that's funny. Wow, that would have sucked, man. Because if I did, if I did spray it all over my, it would have went through my nose and my friggin' mouth, and that would have really sucked. <laughs> oh man. No, you're good. I was able to stop it in time. That would have really been bad. There, his name is Filippo Cousteau. That's Jacques Cousteau's son. I told you it's on. It's on every uh, Friday morning. It's called. Exploration Awesome Planet. And that's what Jacques Cousteau's son, Felipe Cousteau. Good guy, man. He reminds me so much of his father in so many ways. <clears throat> Sometimes your timing is perfect. <laughs> in a way, I'm glad it wasn't exactly perfect because I'm telling you, I would have had coffee all over my laptop, man. That was so close. I just I just chugged it. And I, have, I looked up and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, I better, I put my head down. If you notice, I put my head down. Said, if it comes out, it's going on my feet. <laughs> uh, good story. That's awesome. Yeah, man. I was a big girl, man. She's been around me a long time. I lived in, I moved to California when I was like 19, 20 years old. She came with me out there. She's been all over the place with me, man. Bunch of different apartments. And uh, she's, uh, she's part of my family. I actually have to, this bottom fin cracked. Um, well, you can't see where I'm pointing. I'm pointing at it, and like you can see, but the bottom middle fin was cracked. My buddy fixed it, and then a piece of the bottom of the tail broke off, and I can't, I can't find it. I haven't found it in about 20 years, so and I never will. So either I have to send it to a taxidermist, and they can figure out how to fix it, or I'm just going to leave it like that, which I'll probably just leave it like that. And then he put a clear coat finish over the whole top of it. It came out really good. Hello, Diana. How are you? Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you to the eight people in chat. Nine thumbs up. I appreciate you guys hanging out for a little while with me. Like I said, I have to get off of here in about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. I guess when my sister texts me. Because then I got to let her in. And um, <clears throat> maybe, I don't know if I'll have time for coffee. <clears throat> she might just say, meet me outside. I'm really not sure yet. Got some miles on her now. Yep. Still getting battle scars to this day. That is true. Thank you. Yeah, it's one of my pride and joys, though. I'll be honest with you. 
it was uh, phenomenal. I was 16. Like I said, you know, I was, I was just young. I was a young kid. I would appreciate it to catch a lot more probably now that I'm older, you know, but, uh, I was 16, you know, sneaking beers from my dad. You know, we were up there with his, his one buddy was feeding me Jenny. I'll never forget it. Genesee cream ales they, is big up there. I was chugging Jenny cream ale, 16 years old, man, getting whacked. <laughs> and then I caught that thing like two in the morning. <clears throat> but yeah, this weekend is a uh, opening, opening day trout season here in New Jersey. But I'll tell you what, if I wasn't sick, and I was going to go, I still wouldn't go. These rivers are all blown out over here in New Jersey anyway. And I know a lot of them on the East Coast, there, everything's blown out. So <clears throat> Somebody put a post up on the um, on Facebook in the New Jersey trout uh, site in the group I'm in. It said, stay on your couch and watch fishing on ESPN. <laughs> it made me laugh. Yeah, Jenny Cremales, yep. Where in Cali? I lived in San Francisco most of my life. Moved to Kentucky two years ago. I was in uh, San Bernardino County. I was out there for a year exactly to the day, actually, and I came back home. But I was born and raised in Jersey. I went out there with a friend of mine. His family lived out there in um, a little town called Silver Lakes. It was about a half hour from uh, Victorville and about a half hour north of L.A. in the, in the high desert. Pretty nice. It's pretty nice out there. Yeah. Definitely an experience for sure, but I I, I missed home too much. I, you know, I missed my family and everything. I came back home. Yeah, SoCal. Yep. <clears throat> and I just came back home. You know, about a year later, took a Greyhound. Three and a half days later, I was back in. I was in. They landed in New York City, <laughs> and then from there, I had to. I, I don't know if somebody picked me up. I don't remember. I think my dad picked me up from Port Authority in New York City, and then came back to Jersey. <clears throat> My grandson lives in SoCal. Nice. Marietta. I don't I don't know California at all. Like I said, I, I did that when I was 19. And then I came back, I was 20. Or I was 20 and came back, I was 21. I don't remember exactly. I know I remember coming back and I was able to um I was able to drink in the bars. So I think I moved out there when I was 20 and then uh, and then I turned 21. Because I remember I remember out there I didn't have a driver's license back then either. I never had one in my whole life. But my buddy's father was an ex, um, uh, what do you call him, highway patrol cops or whatever the heck he was, man. But he was like high up, man. He was a big shot. And he retired. And he used to tell me, and he loved to drink beers. So he said to me, hey, Jared, take Dennis's truck, which was manual, was stick. I never drove stick in my life. Didn't have a license. I'm from New Jersey in California with no license. And uh, I had to drive a half an hour into town up into Victorville to go to the local friggin' liquor store to go buy beer he goes if you get pulled over you just tell him my name or whatever and here's a card we're like okay then i did that all the time i learned how to drive stick that way <laughs> freaking scary though man here take my son's truck and go drive a half an hour away even though you've never driven before and uh it's stick just learn he goes you'll learn you'll figure it out in about 10 minutes like, oh, okay man no problem and i was the next sheriff like telling me to do it you know just here, just throw my name around if any pull, pulls you over. Never got pulled over, and I and I told him too. I don't want to say his name, but I said that I'll call him Dennis's dad. Dennis's dad. I said I don't. I don't even have a friggin' um. I'm not even 21. I can't even buy alcohol. He goes, you can. Don't worry about it. They won't even. They won't even uh, bother with you. <laughs> so I'll tell you a lot of fun, man. He's a minister and security guard at a resort. Oh, nice, Mary. And that's your. Uh, that's your grandson. Yeah. Yeah. You said your grandson. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, let me grab my sneakers. I'm going to try to be as ready as I possibly could be when my sister gets here. <coughs> oh, let me change my shirt. I'm not wearing this shirt.
if I threw up, I'd feel a million times better, I'll be honest with you, but I don't have to throw up, so it's kind of weird. Just like dry heaving. I don't know why. It might be the coffee bothering me, I don't know. Ugh. I usually wear my pink Polo Ralph Lauren I can't say that. Say Ralph Lauren five times fast at friggin' 9 a.m. Not easy. I usually wear my pink polo Ralph Lauren shirt when I go to my treatments. It's kind of a thing, but I'm not going to do it today because the last time I went two times ago, I had a bad experience and I said it's time to change. So we're going to wear souped up Mickey here today. Mickey's going to be the shirt of choice. This treat whacked out Mickey Mouse. He's going to be the choice today. <coughs> Yeah, you were saying last night. That's why you haven't been in. You've been uh, busy with the delivering kit kittens or something. One black and white long hair. One black tiger, two gray, and a white one is long hair, three calico. Oh, cool. Oh, man. Shout out to the nine people and ten thumbs up. Thank you guys so much. I do appreciate you. Oh, Terry, the pea soup came out great, too. You said you never had it, but it came out excellent. I had a nice big bowl of it last night for dinner. It was fantastic. Oh, man. <coughs> that bug man's still alive. Oh, wow. <laughs> Third person? What, that you've heard in the past couple days? That's crazy, right? That's the first person I've heard say that probably in 10 years. So that's that's crazy stat. Three people. <clears throat> oh, shit. What is today? What's the date today? Today's the 5th, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's just setting up for Wednesday. I got it. I'm hoping Skip Jack Cindy does a pop-up live tonight. She said she probably will, depending on the weather. I'm hoping. That's good, even though I don't like it. <laughs> it came out really good. I, I enjoyed it. I really did. Oh, I have a couple of good ones. Wow. That's a good... Uh, I told you guys about Wisconsin Trout Fishing. That's the name of the channel. My buddy Ron, he has a, a good video. that he. It's only about six and a half minutes, but I got to watch that later. <clears throat> I can't wait for WrestleMania, man. I'm pumped up. That's a lot of that's a lot of babies. Got that right. This is the smallest litter she's ever had. Her largest was 13. Wow. I commend you, Tina. It's a lot, a lot of cats to be around. It's just, I wouldn't be able to do it. But that's just me. They're not for everybody. When is it, when is this eclipse happening anyway, guys? Tomorrow? Monday? When, when is this happening? <clears throat> I don't have mice. Oh, okay. Monday's eclipse. That's what I thought. Yeah. So they're saying here in Jersey, we might be able to see it um, around 2.30 in the afternoon, 3.30, something like that. 
but my one my one part I just found this channel too. Anything is possible. I know who they are, and I've been to their lives, but I started frequenting there a lot more now. It said, "Looks like we're heading towards Erie for the eclipse. Weather looks better out there than New York at the moment. Looking for a place to car camp, I guess, for the weekend to have a good spot to see it." But I'm guessing you, because I think they said it's going to be like 120 miles visibility of seeing this thing. But I don't want to see it because I don't have those glasses to look at it anyway. Yeah, I know they are advising the glasses, but I, I don't have them. And I'm not going to go out of my way to get them. So I don't even care about it to see anything. I'm just curious to see how dark it gets. That's what I want to do. I actually want to go live. So if it is around 3.30 in the afternoon here, that's about the time I go live anyway. So I would like to um, maybe go live from my phone or even if I go live from my laptop, I can go outside and we can just go see how dark it is. It'd be kind of wicked. Uh, I don't want to look into it. I have problems going on in my life right now. So I don't think they said if you look at it, it can really harm your retina and stuff like directly if you don't have those glasses on. So I don't want to hurt myself. So best to stay away from the areas. Yeah, that's what everybody's saying, but yeah, I don't have the glasses. I don't I don't think even if I had five pairs of glasses, I still don't want to I don't want to look at it. Like I said, I'm sick and I'm scared for every little thing that could affect my body right now. So I probably won't mess with it anyway. I just wanna at least maybe be outside, you know, with the laptop so you guys can see how like literally dark it gets because they said it gets really dark where the, the lights will come on, like the street lights and stuff. So that I'm curious to see. It's only a couple minutes, so. But I got to do a little more research on exact time here, because somebody said it in bugs that I think it's in Illinois. It was going to be I think at two thirty or something like that. So I have to make account for the time change and stuff. Like, so I don't know, three thirty I think here, three o'clock. I'm sure they'll have it on the news all day in the morning. And give us exact times. rough one here this morning i'll watch the video i'm sure there'll be plenty oh i'm sure there will be what was that it scared the crap out of me i never have the sound on my phone ever that's literally scared me You guys can stay out. I don't care if you hear me talking. I'm just calling my sister. <clears throat> just want to see how where she's at. How far. Hey. Hey, I'm on the highway at, uh, I left late today. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, how far are you? minutes you're gonna be 45 minutes oh, okay uh, all right well you'll be here about 10 30 so when you get here just uh call me or text me and i'll just meet you outside you i was gonna say come and have a cup of coffee but when you can have enough time then wait what time's the appointment <laughs> i gotta be there at 11 oh shit no you're all right by the time you get here it'll be 10 30 we'll just go straight there we'll be fine oh okay i got nervous i don't know why i thought it was in the afternoon because i went to, i went back to check your text messages for a time uh-huh and i didn't Oh, no, it's fine. No, 11 o'clock. We'll be all right. We'll be on time. Just uh, take your time. Whatever. Just uh, text me when you're here, and I'll just meet you outside. All right, honey. Love you. Love you, too. Be careful. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Cool deal. Make it a few short spins. All right, cool, Anthony. I'll check them out later. Thanks, bud. Thanks for coming in. Adventure, sorry, I have to go. I wanted to come in and say hello. Mom and I need to go to our house. We had home fire. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'll come back in again. Please take care of yourself. You too. I hope everything works out for you, Diana. I'll pray for you. If you take a piece of paper, lay it on a table, take a pair of binoculars, turn the large ends towards the sun. Oh, my God. And the little end of the paper, you can see it without actually looking at it. Oh, okay. 
Sorry, I ate breakfast away from live, but I'm back on for a spell. Be right back, making some coffee. All right, Rocco, got you, bro. Good to see you. I'll see you in a little bit. You came back to tell me you're leaving again. I love it. <clears throat> yes, we'll be praying for you, Diana. I hope your day gets better. Yeah, so as you heard, my sister's not going to be here for at least another 45 minutes. She left late, she said. She thought the appointment was later, but we'll have about enough time. By the time she gets here, it'll be like 1030. And it's only seriously like 10 minutes away from here is where the center is. So, But she could just drop me off by the front door. I'll go inside, and she knows how to get up where I am. So just so I can check in. And even if you're late a few minutes, they can't do nothing. What are they going to do? Oh, you're not going to have treatment today because you're late 10 minutes? Bullshit. Shit happens, man. I'm always early. So. <clears throat> but that gives me a little more time, too. I'm actually going to try to um, go to the bathroom. My stomach's bothering me, man, so much right now. I don't think it's – it's not nerves, though. I'm not drinking any more coffee. Oh, man. Yeah, I had a few people that – um, Cassie, who was coming in, she had a, they had a bad fire and where she lived. They lost power, and she's hoping to get back to her house. Uh, Miss Terry's power was out yesterday. So, I mean, a lot of people going through a lot of stuff right now. So, uh, just pray for each other and, you know, hope everything gets better for everyone that's going through something rough right now. <clears throat> so, yeah, so when she gets here, I'm going to have to just go outside and get in the car and go. I have to pack up soup. You know what? I might just have her stop here again afterwards. And just well, so it's just going to be a lot easier, I think. Less chance for anything to spill, right? I mean, I, I just don't want to have to come all the way. I don't want to have to come back here just to get soup. It's stupid. Because I have soup for my mom and dad and for my sister. But then it's going to wind up sitting in her car until we get done with the cancer center and back to my parents' house. I don't think it'll go bad, right? Three, four hours sitting in the car. I mean, it's not. What's the temperature? It doesn't look like it's uh, hot outside. Temperature for East Rutherford, New Jersey. The temperature in East Rutherford right now is 42 degrees. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 35. No, the soup will be fine. The soup will be fine, yeah. With the wind, it says it feels like it's 35. All right. It's cold outside. Soup will stay fine. I'm taking it with me. It's going in the car. We could just go. I'll have my sister put it in the trunk tight in the bag, and it'll stay uh, good. Good, because I don't want to have to come back. Because if, if I came back, I'm just I would just stay home, because I know I'm going to feel like shit. So I know if I had to come back to my house for any reason, I'm just going to be like, I'll give them their soup tomorrow, and that's it. Like I just I would have wound up staying home. But I do want to go see my mom. I want to go see my my brother. I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. So it would be nice to see them. I don't know how long I'm going to stay because it all depends how I feel, like I said. A lot of it's going to depend if I have my medicine is there today, too. If my medicine ain't there. I'm going to really feel like shit later. But she said since she put it in as a new script a couple days ago that it should be there today, and I won't have to wait till Tuesday. I'm sure hope I'm hoping so because I've been in a lot of pain. <clears throat> but yeah, how cold is it? It just said it on the phone. It said uh, forty something, but with the wind, it feels like thirty-five. And it says going up to 50, but with the wind, it'll probably feel like 40. It's cold. It's been windy. It's been very windy. It's been blowing for a couple days really bad. Yeah. 36 feels like 25. Yeah, it'll stay fine in the car. Like I said, I don't want to have to get back, come back in the house, lug everything back. I just do it now and get it over with while I feel okay because I know I'm not going to feel good later. <clears throat> You never know. Maybe I'll feel great today. Who the hell knows? There was one time out of this is my fifth or sixth treatment. This the one time it was like in the middle, third one maybe, that I felt 
freaking fantastic when I left. I remember saying it to my dad in the car. I'm like, wow, I can't believe how good I feel right now. And that lasted all night. And then the next day it hit me like halfway in the afternoon. Then it hit me the next day. And I, I was out for like three, four days, just out. Like, I don't want to be bothered. I don't know if you guys remember. I was still doing my lives in the morning, but I wasn't feeling too hot. <clears throat> Yep. Ribbit. Ribbit. That's what I hear. And crickets right now. Nobody's talking. Going on. Listen to your body. Oh, yeah. You have to. 100%. We had all four seasons in 48 hours. It was crazy yesterday and the day before. It's been crazy across the whole United States from what I've been hearing. You know, I'm in a lot of different lives and a lot of people from all over the country are just saying the weather's whacked out. It's just mother nature's on some kind of some kind of kick right now. She's 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 losing her marbles. Back, I will wrap with you all for five minutes. And I'm heading out to buy household supplies. You got it, Rocco. I got you. What you want to rap about, homie? I'm trying to put on my eyelashes. Okay, be careful. Focus. <laughs> it takes focus. That's funny. Listen to your eyes and listen to your hands then, Terry. Take your own advice. The hood. Rap about the hood. <clears throat> Whew. Where'd you grow up, Rocco? I remember you said, I know it's not, uh, he said the hood, this life. Where'd you grow up? In what state? I know, it's, I know it wasn't Tennessee. Didn't you grow up somewhere like north or something? Maybe it wasn't you. I could have sworn you, you said you, you didn't live there your whole life. Do you know what FOCUS stands for? No. Yeah, you, Rocco. Do you know what FOCUS stands for? No. What does it stand for, Tina? You tell me. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll help Terry put her eyelashes on. <clears throat> Uh, what was shocking to me, Rocco, is if you look at your profile pic, you don't have a beard in there. And if you do, it's very small. Yeah, that's right. I thought you said you grew up, you were born in uh, Massachusetts. I, I, I remember that in my head. Yep. It's crazy. It's a big change, you know, from Massachusetts to go down there, from north to south, near Angel, Springfield, Massachusetts. Nice. I've never been up that way. I would love to. I'd love to check it out. I want to go up like... Up in, up in that area, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, you know, just New England area. I would love to check it out. I heard it's so beautiful up there. I tease my granddaughter about eyelashes. I tell her, take those caterpillars off her eyes. <laughs> That's funny. What does focus stand for, Tina? You still haven't said it. Unless it's vulgar. Don't do it. <clears throat> So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do for for lunch slash dinner today. That's why I ate breakfast because I hate going there and then not having anything to eat. I did it one time in the morning and it sucked. I was starving the whole time I was there and I started getting like hangry. And that's the worst feeling in the world when you're hungry and then you're like aggravated because you're there. See, it's, it's horrible. No, when we would get mad at someone, we would say focus didn't sound so bad. Oh, okay. Cool deal. Okay. <laughs> I kind of get the idea, Tina, I guess. Oh, man. I just can't wait to get this done and over with. I'm not, I'm not, a, not excited for it at all today. Just not. But the best thing for me is I'm excited for SmackDown. It's the last one before WrestleMania tomorrow. It's going to be interesting. Plus Hall of Fame induction. That's going to be awesome. I say the F word. Yeah, same here. 
I try. I've been trying to curve back my cursing, but it's it's not easy. You know, I grew up in my household. You know, my mom, my mom dropped the f bomb. It was like the word, like the. I think I said it one day in here. The, the f bomb to my mom was like the word the. That's how often she used the f bomb. But it is what it is. You know. Grew up in a real household. We didn't, I didn't grow up in a household where everything was all pretty and you know, like no cussing and all that, none of that. Nah. You know, might might have thought it was a little crazy growing up, but you know what? My parents were real. You know what I mean? And I appreciate that. As I'm older now, I do appreciate it more. <clears throat> Same. Here. Same here, Jerry. I love you, Mama. My mom's awesome. She's just uh, she. Need, I really hope she's. Uh, my dad said to me yesterday, "Oh, she's gonna back out from going up at my sister's house." But she needs to go. She really does. She needs to get away for a couple of days just to regress, go see her grandbabies, you know, and and hang out with my sister, do girly things, you know, paint your toes and all that, whatever you girls do, all that crap, put eyelashes on, and uh, just get away, you know, get away from my dad, get away from my brother for a couple of days, and just. Go hang out. But my dad's like, oh, I think she's going to try to, like, wheeze her way out of it. She's not going to want to go. And I'm like, I'm like, make her go. Just tell her go. Like, kick her out for the weekend. It's going to be good for her. She really, she really, it's good for her to get out. It really is. I raised three boys, so it went around here a lot, the F-bomb. <laughs> yeah. Came to, came to Florida, turned 18. Then I came up to Tennessee when my dad moved here. Oh, okay. Cool deal, man. So you're you're an East Coaster all around, through and through. Whether it be north or south, you are you are if somebody asks you where you're from, I'm from the East Coast. You can say that proudly. <clears throat> yeah. Listen. If you didn't grow up in and you know, I had friends that grew up and their parents weren't like that, you know, like well, my parents never cursed to this and that. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're real or not real. I'll take back what I said before. I, I just say that my parents were real down to earth, you know, hardworking folks, you know what I mean? Didn't have a lot of money, you know, but did their best to, you know, raise us three kids, you know, and give us, try to give us the best they could, you know, for the means they had. And, you know, my mom always worked. My dad always worked. I got to say that they both always worked, worked their butts off. Uh, my mom was a dog groomer for over 35 years, and my dad worked at a company for so long, and uh, then he retired. And now he's a crossing guard. I got him a job in town as a crossing guard. I knew the, the guy that was the head of it and uh, hooked my dad up, got him a job doing that. So he does that, you know, during the school year, have a little money coming in and uh, just hard working, you know, hard working middle class people. I just, uh, you know, work their butt off to try to, you know, give for their family. And there's what else can you ask for in this life? You know, it's not everybody's born uh, with a lot of money. So. <clears throat> come to Florida. Your mom and Seth can get lashes and nails did. I thought you said me come to Florida. They can come to Florida and get their nails did. I'm not. I'll come to Florida just to come hang out with the girls anyway. GMOS homemade lye soap was nasty. We got it if we swear. Well, listen, it wasn't for swearing. I uh, Actually, I said F you one time to my mother, and you know what I got? I got a right hook from my dad. My dad right in the face, pow, man, my head hit the wall. I was like, dang. I was like this. I was, st I was like staggering, dude, like on Mike Tyson's punch out. I was like staggering, dude. My head was like, felt like a friggin', like I got hit by a dinosaur. And he looked at me just like this in my eyes and said, if you ever talk like that to your mother again, this is going to feel very lightly. And I never said the F word to my mother again. I learned my lesson. Even to this day, I don't like cursing in front of my mom even though she drops the F-bomb all the time. I try not to curse in front of her just because I remember that. But that was so out of line. I was a young punk, little wise ass, thought I knew everything, and mom didn't know shit. And, uh, well, it's okay. My dad came home from work. He, she told him. Next thing you know, like I said, my head was bouncing off the, wall, the side of the wall. Learned my lesson. There's people today, so, oh, that's wrong. You just shouldn't hit your children. We learned our lessons that way when we grew up. <clears throat> you were out of line, you got a whooping. That was it. You know. Nowadays, people be called freaking dyphus and shit. They, they beat their children. No, they discipline their children. There's a difference. Hmm. Shit. 
I had my mom's rings imprinted in my friggin' forehead a few times. That's for damn sure, Terry. Freaking, what did you do, motherfucker? Bang! Back slap right in the forehead, dude. I had the, the wedding ring, the band, the, the other one imprinted, imprinted on top of my forehead. <laughs> for sure. Got that right. That stood in the corner. My mom, my shit, my daddy come home from work. He'd be like, what'd you do now? He goes, you spend more more time in a corner. You, you probably are friends with the spiders in the corner. <laughs> He's they be, they be laughing. What'd you do now? Yeah, he did this. He did that at school. Whatever. Stupid shit. You know, when you're done as a kid. So, stand in a corner. I remember one time. I don't remember what I did. But my mom's like, I'm, you're going to be kneeling on popcorn. Yeah, she made me kneel on popcorn kernels, man. Let me tell you something. That shit is no joke. To, the, to this day, I, if I bring it up, she's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm so sorry. Like, you ain't got to apologize. Shit, I learned my lesson. That is that is no joke, man. When you get up and you got a corn kernel stuck a half inch into your fucking knee, that shit hurts. You know not to freaking mess around, and you better do the right thing. I've never heard it before in my life, and uh, I don't know if it was something my, I don't know, my, grand, my grandparents did to the kids, you know, of her growing up, but uh, I'll tell you what, that was no joke. Cut from similar cloth, yep. I wouldn't do anything to get the soap. <laughs> Terry said, hey, hell, I've been backhanded by my mama saying shit. <laughs> Told you. I had to freaking hit my mom's imprint of her wedding ring and everything else. And, and the freaking right up here in my forehead, man. You could see the design. Give me a little shit. Bah! What the fuck did you say? Oh, man. But you know what? You're young, it's stupid, and it is what it is, you know? I don't hold it against them. You know, some kids, they grow up, oh, I was abused as a child. My, my parents used to beat me. Shut the fuck up and grow a pair. That's because you, you're brought up now where everything is, oh, I'm going to take away your cell phone. You know what? The first time I owned a cell phone, guys, first time, I was 19 years old, my first time I got a cell phone, and I bought it myself. My parents didn't give me a cell phone, a beeper. She wanted a beeper. Go get a paper out and pay for it yourself. I told you, my parents were hardworking people, man. Had enough money to put food on the table. Christmases were nice. You know what I mean? Might not have got the expensive bike like my friends did, but you know what? I had a bike under there. You know what I mean? Every year I had brand new shoes. I had brand new uh, clothes to go to school. Might have been from Sears. And it wasn't It wasn't from Macy's. But you know what? My parents worked hard, man. And I, I owe a lot to them. I really do. You know, you, you don't realize it when you're younger, you know. But as I get older, I'm like, you know what? They did the best they could, you know. They worked hard, so did you see what? Yeah, I said, yeah, I, I saw what you said, Tina. I got it. Oh, like I said, I, 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 it happened once, Mary, and I paid for it. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Terry's Terry's doing the sound and blend. Soap, yuck! I'd rather get bitch slapped. <laughs> You're right. I've tasted soap. In the corner, standing in the corner with the soap in my mouth. Friggin you, you stay there till your father gets home. I'm like, damn, man, I thought my stomach hurt now. I mean, my stomach would be friggin' doing backflips too. I'm like, what's dad gonna do when I get home? I think that whooped my ass. But you know what? At the end of the day, it made me a better man. It really did. Like I said, a lot of people today, they, they just had they discipline their kid. Oh, I'm taking away your friggin' PlayStation for three days. Oh, come on, man. Your kid ain't gonna learn. Take, I'm taking away your cell phone privileges for a week. What? How's a kid going to learn? I'm not saying sitting there to beat your kids. I'm Trust me, I'm not sitting there promoting that. But I'm just saying that I don't think what my parents did was wrong. You know? I don't. You know? You know, is there a right way or a wrong way to, to teach your kids? No. You just learn as you go as a parent, too. So The leather strap would have been even better than the soap. Yeah. Oh, I've had I've had the belt, I've had the belt whoopings, oh, I've I've had them all, all of them. I've been all of them. <laughs> Not going to get into details. All of them, you know, it is what it is. But you know what? You learn you learn what the word respect means. You know, sometimes kids are stubborn, you know, stupid, and they think they can get away with talking their family, you know, to their parents like that, who who did provide for them, you know. You know, you're a kid. You're like, you don't do anything for me. You know what? You had a roof over your head. You didn't have to pay a dime. 
Friggin' you had friggin' three square meals a day and snacks and friggin' PlayStation and this and, and everything else. Quit your whining, man. Our pager was our name being yelled down the street. Shit, ours wasn't even that. It was when the street light came on. Yeah, it's better be pedaling back to the house. Or you missed dinner. When the lights went off, that's when your ass was home. There was no cell phones or beepers or no. You got on your bike no matter where you were, which was usually within three four blocks from the house at somebody else's block, throwing a football around, playing soccer, playing with a football, flag football, whatever we were doing, in the woods looking for snakes. And I don't know. You got your ass on your bike, and you pedaled your ass home when the lights came on. And that's how you were allowed out the next day. If you were late, you didn't go out the next day. You came home, and you spent your time in the corner until you learned your lesson. And then you fucking ate your dinner and went to sleep. Yeah, but that's the problem. You know what I mean? Like that's because people are so prissy these days. It's like, oh, you, you can't discipline your children. Come on, man. I'm not sitting here promoting it either. Zigzag. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I don't think parents are wrong disciplining their children. There's nothing wrong with disciplining your child. I mean, you should be able to do whatever you want behind closed doors within reason. Listen, if you're a neighbor and you hear every day your kid crying, you know what I mean? You hear a kid crying over there. Like, is they getting beat with a friggin' A baseball bat across the D every day? That's fucking wrong, for sure. I agree with you. But a little discipline, there's nothing wrong with it, man. It's been like that for generations, you know? <clears throat> I mean, I had chores, too. Listen, I had I cleaned up the dog poop. That was my job. Take the garbage out, whatever. Or if it was bring the, the garbage cans into the front, whatever it was, something, you know? My, my parents always had us uh, do chores. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that either, Terry. You know, it's a different time now, too. I mean, enough for nothing. You know, junior in high school, you're 16. You know, are you more responsible? Yeah. Could you be responsible with a cell phone? The thing was, if cell phones weren't that popular when I was 16 years old, you know what I mean? There wasn't even beepers really yet. So, you know, it, it was more we wanted a bicycle or we wanted a, uh, a game system, you know, or we wanted a. Uh, Whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever we want, it was different than now. You know, kids ask for a cell phone, thousand dollar cell phone for Christmas. <laughs> Shit. If I did that back in the day, but yeah, you're gonna get yeah, ask Santa. See if he brings it. That's what she told me. Kids don't learn how to be responsible or solve problems. Well, I hear you. Like I don't want you sitting here zigzag thinking that I'm like this bad person. I'm just, or my parents are a bad person. They're not. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, there's nothing wrong with disciplining your child. You know, I grew up on a farm, so we had extra shit, shoveling jobs like the calf or pen. Oh, I hear you, Tina. That's true. I didn't get my first cell phone until after 9 11. Yeah. I said I was 19 years old when I got my first cell phone and I paid for it myself. I, I left my parents' house when I was 16 years old. 16. I lived with my grandmother for two years. My sister lived upstairs with her fiance at the time. Then they got married. I lived down there for two years with my grandparents, and then I moved out on my own. So by 18, I was I've been on my own, like my own, my own paying rent since 18 years old. No, the kid no the kids now. Oh, okay. Is exactly cool. I didn't want you to, you know, judge me for whatever. I mean, you're you're entitled to do that too, but I'm not sitting here promoting shit. Trust me, I'm not. I'm just saying that the way I was brought up, I don't regret it, you know? I used to. I used to be bitter about it when I was younger, you know, like when I first went out into the world, you know? I was like, oh, man, you know, I'm a man now, you know? It wasn't right how my parents treated me, whatever. Like, But now that I'm older and I'm like, I'm just like, it is what it is, you know? They did what they did, you know? They did the best they did as a parent, you know? Like I said, did we, did we get slapped or put in a corner or went to bed without eating dinner from time to time because you were an asshole. You did something wrong at school or you didn't want to listen. You know, it was the fifth time we told you, you know, like, listen, next time you're going to bed without dinner, if you don't listen, then you do it again because you're spiteful little shithead. You know what? You got to learn your lesson too. So, you know, they did the best they could. And, but like I said, you know, every Christmas there were gifts under the tree. Every birthday we had gifts, you know, it might not have been the best, but you know what? They worked their butts off for us to have a decent life. And for that, I'm grateful. And I don't say that enough to my parents, but it's true. 
kids don't even have the life skills. It's sad. No, it's true. That's why I said right at, at 16 years old, I was able to go out on my own. That's why I understand life now a little bit better. You know, I could I could take care of myself. I mean, shit happens, you know, where you lose your job or something and you, you know, you lose your apartment or house that happens. Shit happens. I'm talking about being able to survive. You know, my dad always says that he's like, I never worried about you. You're a survivor. You always were able to take care of yourself. And I count that to being brought up the way I was, you know, I'll wrap with you. Cool cats later time for some action. Be well, have a good one, Rocco. I'll see you, man. I'm not sure if I'll be live later. I doubt it. Um, going to my parents after treatment. So if I come home and I have an hour before um, wrestling comes on, I'll probably come on maybe 6.30, maybe. It'll be a little bit later, but I'll come on if you guys are around. <clears throat> Our parents loved us. These kids today need a crying towel and safe room. Yeah, that's true. It's sad today. My kids thanked us for being strict with them. They say they see the younger kids being smart ass. It's not true, Terry. It's 100% true. It's just different today. You know? Like I said, you know, parents did today like they did years ago. They'd be in a lot of trouble probably, but they shouldn't be because there's no right way or wrong way to discipline your child. They're your child, you know. There's no, I, I, th I don't know who said it. I don't know if it was my mom or my sister said it about her kids. My sister has four boys, and I'll tell you, those, those boys were pretty good growing up. I mean, if you're having four boys, they all looked out for each other. They were all, you know, brothers, you know. They, they get fights and arguments, I'm sure. But my sister said, uh, there's no handbook when you become a parent. You know, there's no book that says, oh, here, this is how to do it. You know, you just do it as you go along, you know, and make decisions that you make. Because I'm sure as parents to say, oh, I wish I didn't do that or whatever. But you know what? You did the best decision you could have at the time. You know, that's all you can do. But I'm going to get off of here, guys, because my sister's going to be here any minute, in about 15 minutes, and I need to go uh, sit down on a throne. And uh, and I got to go pack up the soup. I got to get all my shit together because when she's, when she's here, then I got to bounce. I got to leave. So let me get off of here, and if I can have a little time later, I'll try to jump on maybe like 6.30 or so, 7 o'clock for an hour. All right? I'm sorry to cut it short, guys, but I do have to go like right now. All right? I love you, and I'll catch you later on. All right? I appreciate you guys. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry, guys, but I got to bounce. I'll see you later. I love you guys. Okay. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate it. I love you. I'll see you later, guys. Bye.